This Leroy Johnson coming at you once again. Boy, I got some breaking news again today. Alright. Y'all remember a while back when uh, Barack Obama, he uh, sent two billion, with a B, two billion dollars to the Muslim Brotherhood Foreign Aid? Well, he done that twice. Two different times he did that, and it was your money. And then we hear a story that the Muslim Brotherhood throwing this big hoot nanny of a shindig party where all the Muslims have gathered in the streets and are celebrating, worshiping Funani or whoever in the world they worship. Well, I'd be throwing a big party too if I just got two billion dollars. And it was yo money. Heck, that was back in February. In fact, y'all gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up too, and I'm gonna try to put it down in the description. But if I can't find it, I know it's there. The Muslim Brotherhood wants to tear down the pyramids in Egypt on account of they think they symbolize paganism. That's a real story. They really trying to do this and Obama supports them, dumb bitches. You don't tear down the pyramids, you Barack Hussein Obama. Boy, I tell you, that just makes me madder than a retarded midget playing with a yo-yo. I tell you what, I just can't stand that some bitch sometimes. And then you got Angelina Jolie's mama. She, you know, she don't like him, but she didn't tell no lies, but no slander, but nothing illegal. And next thing she knows, she's getting death threats. And, you know, you got, oh, uh, Andrew Breitbart, he went public and said, I'm going to tell everybody about these pamphlets Obama released saying he was born, in, you know, Obama's own words saying, I was born in Kenya and raised in Ireland and raised in Indonesia. Uh, Andrew Breitbart found him and told everybody about it. Well, the next thing you know, Andrew Breitbart winds up dead. So then the coroner, uh, the newspaper, within two hours after Andrew was dead, the newspaper knew it, knew what happened right away. Yeah, you know, the the mainstream media, controlled by Bilderberg, they they knew who who what happened to Andrew. Yeah, he died of a heart attack. Yeah, right. They didn't have a clue. Not no, not within two hours after he died in the corner, and he got a chance to look up. Well, anyway, we was waiting on the corner report when he wound up getting murdered. We want, and of course, uh, no, Obama would never, no, yeah, dead gum Obama administration coming out of dead gum Chicago, mobs, all them mafia some bitches. I tell you what, but then you, you stop and think, well, Obama's just a puppet for the Bilderberg Group. They're the ones that's actually calling the shots. They're the ones that's all against Christianity. They're the ones that's controlling our media. You got Ted Turner, he's head honcho of C N N. Of course, CNN and just put Leroy Johnson on their website when we talk about the 9 11 video. <laughs> yeah, boy. But I bet Ted Turner don't know I was on there. <laughs> that some bitch I can't stand him neither. Wants to reduce population from the world from 6 billion down to 1 billion. He openly admits that. And we still watch CNN because we don't believe he'll do it. What's wrong with the population? I mean, with too many people. That's what. That's why we have global warming. We have global warming because too many people are using too much stuff. But if they there were less people, they'd be using less stuff. It, that's like Hitler going, you know, people saying, Hitler's finna to have a holocaust and millions of people finna to die and be thrown in the ditch. Yeah, right, you idiot. They ain't gonna do that because Hitler said the biggest lie is the easiest lie to get away with. Just bragged on that stuff. Leroy Johnson's signing out, and I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. And so what do we get now in Barack Obama? Well, I've got videos, by the way. This election, we're going to vet him. I've got videos. This election, we're going to vet him from his college days to show you. <laughs> why? To show you why racial division and class warfare are central to what hope and change was sold in 2008. The videos are going to come out. The narrative is going to come out that Barack Obama met a bunch of silver ponytails back in the 1980s, like Bill and Bernadine Dorn, who equally radical, 
said one day we're going to have the presidency. And the rest of us slept while they plotted and they plotted and they plotted and they oversaw hundreds of millions of dollars in the Annenberg Challenge and they had real money from real capitalists. Barack Obama is a radical. We should not be afraid to say that. And that is who's in the White House. And that's who's outside right now telling you you don't have a right to be here and who would squelch your free speech just as easily they do at Harvard, Vassar, Yale, Wesleyan. They're a bunch of totalitarian freaks. They tried to defeat the Tea Party, and when they failed, they wanted their Tea Party. And what did they create? They created the Occupy movement. These are the same exact people that organized Camp Casey at Crawford. That was Occupy Crawford. These are the same exact people that went down the highway at the exact time at the end of the summer when Katrina happened. That was Occupy New Orleans. It's the same radicals. They've been in your life since Senator Obama became part of your vocabulary. They are at war with you. Take that what you will. And this is my thesis that... The anti-war movement was never about anti-war. It was a Saul Alinsky community organizing tool to get Barack Obama and the left elected. That the Republican Party and the conservative movement is not what ABC and CBS puts on the screen. They try to portray you in the worst possible light. And when I walk through CPAC or I travel the United States to meet people in the Tea Party who care, black, white, gay, and straight, Anyone that's willing to stand next to me to fight the progressive left, I will be in that bunker. And if you're not in that bunker because you're not satisfied with this candidate, more than shame on you, you're on the other side. This administration, through Secretary Hillary Clinton, is going to announce that it could care less what Congress has ordered about helping those who are terrorizing and persecuting Christians in Egypt and destroying churches and eliminating freedom of religion and are saying uh, they want to rethink their peace accord with Israel and setting themselves up to be the enemy of Israel. And now this administration, knowing that Congress has a law that says you can't give people money in Egypt and they're going to give $1.5 billion, not in humanitarian aid, not, not food, military aid. So forget all of those speeches that this president gave at APAC and, oh gosh, we're, gonna, we're Israel's best friend, we're going to help them because, oh no, we're going to give people who have the power to destroy Israel on the border with Israel military aid as they are planning, many there, make it clear they hate Israel, they hate us. And I've said over and over, we don't have to pay people to hate us. They'll do it for free. We have to quit funding the enemy of us and the enemy of our friends. This is insane. And it's time that we do not provide military aid, abetting, and assistance to people that want to destroy Christians, that want to destroy Israelis, and that want to put the world in turmoil and have everyone living exactly as they dictate. We want to keep some freedoms here and in Israel, and the way to do that is not to fund and provide military assistance to anyone unless we know they are our friend, they're Israel's friend, they're the friends of our friends. To do otherwise will bring calamity on this country like they will not realize until it's too late. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back.